RLM Radio. The girl of your dreams has got to be in some bar. Sorry, boys and girls, but this is X-rated. So if you're under 18... Get out, get down, right? Get the point. Good. And now... Bend Y'all ready for this? We do it all night long. And now, your host, Grammy. Holy shite. <laughs> Happy Wacka 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 Doodle Wednesday, y'all. And uh, guess what? I, um, yeah, I totally spazzed off a couple of things. I was busy scrolling and checking out what everybody else was posting and almost forgot to turn on Spreaker. <laughs> Oh, it is a wacka 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 doodle Wednesday. Let me tell you, my brain is whacked. That's for damn sure. Let's see, just a minute. I'm checking. Out. I got notifications on Twitter, and it's like, holy shite, holy shite, what's going on? Okay, hi Vinny, hi Barman. I see you over here on Twitter. Thank you ever so much, Barman, for tweeting me out. I really do appreciate it. Looks like I got 412 stalkers yet. Booyah, and uh, there was someone that posted something earlier to see if you were being Twitter shadow banned. Eh, I don't know that I necessarily want to know, <laughs> want to know, warming up that, yeah, sock puppet, getting things shaking. <laughs> I was playing that, play that funky music, yeah. <laughs> Oh, and yes, I was chair dancing. Yes, I was sock. So there you go. <laughs> okay, <laughs> excuse me. Got myself all choked up. Okay, so I checked out Twitter. Freedoms Network. Thank you, Grimner, for sharing me over there. Dude, oh, yes, and that little drink that you have at the, yeah, at the notification. Yeah, I need one of those. <laughs> it's, whoo. It's been a week and it's only Wednesday. What the hell? What's going on here? Trump will sign executive action ending family separation. It's an executive order. You guys changing the verbiage doesn't make it any different. It's just that you guys are playing by different rules than what were assigned to that sp specific verbiage. And so now you're changing one word. George Carlin would be so proud. So proud and then shake his damn head okay so over on freedoms network once again hey grammy i also see loki luck three is over here as well as the lovely Ar Australia. estrella yeah that one too bobby bain was also over here and java 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 doctor who says the united states military is the right hand of death and destruction for the new world order yeah we are the popo of the world, or at least the bully on the block. We go around and kick sand in everybody's faces. Why? Because we can. Because we have a bigger military than, what, any other 27 countries put together? Hmm? Jeez, I wonder. You know, that was one of those things um, I saw on Twitter that I think I retweeted actually about um there's no money for hospitals there's no money for education there's no money for um housing but by god we got plenty of money for war <laughs> kind of fucked up priorities oop f bomb so early in the show <coughs> excuse me pardon me oh well it happens okay one more look at twitter cuz i see i got some more notifications hi jabberwocky i see you're getting ready to go to sleep night night darling have a wonderful rest. Yes, the world needs a reset. Somebody push the reset button. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Over on Fakey Book. Not a whole hell of a lot going on over on Fakey Book. Other than I see a sign that says corduroy skirts are a sin. <laughs> hey, I happen to have owned a couple of those in my life. Don't anymore, but I did back in the day. So, yeah, you know, that it's whatever. <laughs> <laughs> and over on mines, don't really see a whole hell of a lot. There's an awful lot of pissy ass. Wow. Lots of illegal alien stuff going on. And, uh, yeah. Lots of very, very angry people. And, you know, being angry at someone else who wants to come somewhere. Now, I know this is not all of them. 
I know there are some people that come over here wishing to cause hate and discontent, but there are also an awful lot of people that come to this country because they believe that it is someplace freer and safer than where in the hell they're at right now. Unfortunately, there are also those that make the news that come over here and they're escaping from a horrible situation and they're bringing the horrible situation with them which reminds me of buckaroo bonsai no matter where you go there you are so when you try and escape your shit make sure you don't pack it in your overnight bag and bring it along with you which a lot of people do and that goes for everybody in every situation you know, you move on to a new relationship because the bad one, the last one was just a horrible relationship. Well, did you ever stop and look in the mirror and see if maybe you had some baggage that you needed to leave with that other relationship and you didn't want to carry it into the new one? Baggage, baggage, baggage. You need somebody to carry that shit away for you because obviously you're not doing it. Okay, what Netflix film crews banned from looking at each other for longer than five seconds? Oh, God. Netflix. Yeah, Netflix. You're really starting to suck, guys. Just got to tell you. Once you put, what's her face, rice on the board, yeah. You've really gone downhill, dude. Just got to say that. Okay. So I've checked Facebook. I've checked FN. I've checked, which, by the way, Freedoms Network. Please, if you've got it, help. They've they got enough to carry on till July the 23rd, so... Keep those donations rolling in, okay? Because, you know, this stuff ain't cheap. I know. I've been there, done that. It ain't cheap and it ain't easy. So if you wish to have that access, sometimes it comes with a little bit of a price tag. And kick in. Ain't going to hurt you one dang bit. Okay. Uh, so, dun, 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 So now I need to get over to the one place where you need to be, because if you are listening in on Spreaker, by the way, yeah, this is Grammy's Rocket Chair. <laughs> I did tell you it's a whack day, in, didn't I? Man, brain farts are us, and the app, it's rather appropriate for a wackadoodle Wednesday. But, yeah. If you wish to uh, give me some static while I'm on the radio, come on over to reallibertymedia.com and uh, think of a nickname, join the chat, because I can't watch that many chats, not with my crappy-ass internet. So you're lucky I'm doing... I, I got tin can, kite string, and duct tape. I, I also broke down and got some gorilla tape. So I'm not, I haven't gotten any of that flex tape yet, because, yeah, infomercials, nah, they don't, they don't get me. So... Uh, hoo, ha, he, ha, who? Silver, god dang. Silver, come on. You're way lower than what I paid for you years ago. This is redunculous. Silver prices need to go up. Damn it. Okay, so over here in the RLM, which is where you need to be, I see right up top Mr. Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Gotta take a sip here. Mmm, some juice. I also see Grimner, the RLM god, don't you know, as well as the lovely Moose Girl, who was out partying over the weekend. I hope you had a good time. And apparently, from the way the chat was going last night, when I checked back in again, after the th Thunder Boomers had moved on by, Miss Moosey has got lots of wada, wada, wada as well. Um, yeah, it's pretty soggy out here in Grammyland. We had some big bada booms, and in town, where I used to live... They had golf ball to baseball sized hail. So there is an awful lot of damage in town. Mother Nature's not a happy woman. I just got to tell you. Oh, she's picking on all kind of people. And I really think there's somebody else pissing off Mother Nature. And so she's smiting. And or you might want to say she's clearing the air. But since we're putting so much crap in the air, it takes an awful lot of clearing. You think? Oh, well. Back to saying hey. Hey, Miss Kate. How's things down in Florida? The lovely Tessa over on Twitter 
sent me a link from Florida that I will get to here and later on this evening, I hope. I also see Asmo. Hi, Asmo. How are you, honey? And the lovely Beth Z is here. Hey, Beth. Yes, Vinny, you are easy. <laughs> I mean, easily. Easily. Yeah. You're not easy, but you can be tricked. I also see Chalcedony is in the chat, as well as the lovely Chloe. And Free Enslaved is here. Hey, Free. I'm here, as well as I be Don C. And Java, 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 Java Doctor 2 is in the house. And looky there, JJ's. Hi, you Scottish feller, you. Juana Taco is also here, as well as the lovely Rain. I saw she was chatting a little bit last night, too, when I checked in after the storms. Um, RLM Fluky, the Vanna White of the RLM channel. She is a uh, barman's younger assistant. And she's quite able-bodied, if you ask me. I don't know if barman and her have a thing going on or not, and I don't want to know. That's between them. Hi, Rob Works. I see you in the chat, but I don't recall seeing a bubbler. Where's my bubbles? <laughs> I also see Trust No One. Hey, trusty feller, how are you doing? Colfax 101 is logged in but marked away. Dakota is in the house as well as Frumpy and Ibe Doncy Woik is here too. He's an overachiever. And looky there, Kozu and Moy 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 is here. Well, it's just one Moy, but I just like to say it lots more. Um, yes, that's true, Vinny. Chemtrails are man's way of saying F you to Mother Nature. And you know, I listened to a video the other day, and it really made a hell of a lot of sense. Chemtrails in space says, well, or, or shall I say it this way? Chemtrails in space. <laughs> Hit my nose. Um, but, uh, yeah. And then those rained down on us as well. And some of the documents that this gentleman was sharing were things like, you know, causing um, ozone layer issues over enemy countries and stuff like that. And it's like, wow, you some bitches, do you not realize what you do to others will also come upon you? You do not understand that? When you mess with others like that, you tweak the system like that? Yeah, it winds up tweaking your ass just as much. It just takes a little longer dumbasses. Oh, well, I see lots of poxes. Poxes in the room. Pox, pox, and poxified, and poxiphone, and I also see a pop of pond sauce. Sock puppet! Hi, Sock! How you doing, sweetie? I also see Skittles. Skittles is the one that is always initiating sexual adventures with things in the RLM chat. He drops the F-bomb. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I also see, also see Vinny. Yeah, 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 Vinny. And to round out the crew, the one, the only, the Phantom, who did my awesome intro that's probably kind of short, a little bit shorter on Spreaker because, well, I was paying attention elsewhere and <laughs> wasn't pushing buttons in the proper order in the proper time. Huh, imagine that. Me being just a wee bit off kilter. Oh, so who's blowing Bubbles? Bubbles' wife. <laughs> Bubbles the clown. Woohoo! Okay, so let me see. First thing I'm going to do is, uh, oh my God, yes. Uh, th here's, a, here's a lovely little meme over here on Twitter that I'll just go ahead and share on the RLM chat real quick. Man, if that ain't appropriate, I have no idea what is. Dumping it in there. Dumping it in. Thank you, Dan. No more Bankers Wars. And yeah, no more Bankers Wars. We're really tired of this crap. Y'all are the only ones that benefit from this shit. Why? 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 Okay. So... I'm going to redo, and if it's more of that in your face, growl, 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 scream stuff. Um, oh, hey. Yes, I see this one. 
uh, Holocaust was legal. Slavery was legal. Segregation was legal. The brave woman who um, cared for and hid my six-year-old aunt in the attic in Budapest was a criminal. She broke the law by sheltering her. Wow. And you know what? It's really sad when being a compassionate and caring individual is a violation of the law. You know you are in a fucked up world when being a caring individual is a violation of some law. Laws are just squiggles and lines on a piece of paper. That doesn't necessarily, you cannot legislate morality peeps. So stop voting for these moronic douchebags that are out there that, you know, I'm going to make things better. Trust me. Trust me. Yeah. Yeah, read that. That's code for fuck you. Pretty much. So what's this? I see something from worldtruth.tv. Always has something that grabs my eyeballs and drags me over there. By gosh and by golly. And what is this? Ten most mysterious secret societies. Now, how can they be a secret society if we know about them? Hmm? So who rules the world? Well, who do we allow to rule the world because we follow their orders? Or we go by their squiggles and lines on a piece of paper? Hmm? It's the global elite, the bankers, the politicians, or religion. I'm going to say all of the above. The world is ruled by powerful and dangerous secret societies. Well, they are the string pullers. I will admit to that. They definitely are the string pullers. And all of these other ones, in gov basically in government, you know, all the little, the little people that say, please vote for me and I will make your life wonderful and you will have rainbows and butterflies. Yeah, those people, they're just puppets. And the ones that realize that it's just a puppet job that you're doing there. Yeah, they don't stay long because they can't stomach it. So, the powerful, um, powerful because their members occupy virtually every seat of power from the corridors of government to the boardrooms of Wall Street. Dangerous because they carry out bizarre rituals and conduct their business behind closed doors. Actually, they are also dangerous because they have convinced others that when they give orders to do all kinds of diabolical and nasty things to other human beings, those people actually believe that they have to follow those orders. That's really sad. There's a psyche kind of thing going on that's just messed up. So while secret societies have existed for centuries, you know, the secret handshake, like the He-Man Woman's Haters Club from the Little Rascals and, and, uh, what was that club that that uh, Calvin and Hobbes had that they would never let Susie come play? Poo poo heads. Hobbes is alive, by the way. Those of you that don't know that, I'm just going to tell you, Hobbes is alive and well. So, while these secret societies have existed for centuries, exerting a mysterious influence on the world. Here are the top 10 most mysterious secret societies that actually hold the key to everything in today's world. Well, you know, and that's because we basically abdicated our own personal keys. But that's a whole other story. <clears throat> so, number one, Skull and Bones. It was founded in 1832 by Yale University students. Skull and Bones is surrounded by conspiracy theories, most popular being that the CIA founders were members of this secret society and that they still control it. Doesn't surprise me. The society's been criticized for everything. Weird sexual acts, the Kennedy assassination, espionage, and drug smuggling. Which is why the war on drugs will never end, because drug smuggling is such a lucrative business. And why the war on terror will never end, because, well, terrorism is a very lucrative business. You can make money selling to both sides of the equation. Uh, number two is the Bilderberg Group. They were started in 1954 in the Netherlands to create an aristocracy of purpose. <laughs> Mainly in the United States and Europe. Europe. Sounds like a belt, doesn't it? 
So its members include some of the most powerful and highly influential people in the world, from the IMF's top officials to presidents and EU leaders. EU. The most famous conspiracy theories say that the group is run by the Nazis. It is trying to impose a one-world government, and it runs the U.S. Republican Party. Oh, it's not just the Republicans, honey. They also run the Democrats, too. They're two sides of a coin. And the independents, they're that little rim around the outside. You know, they it's kind of like the rim around the outside of your asshole. <laughs> I know, I said that out loud. But basically, yeah, that's... Nah. No, you have two choices, and both of them suck. And the other ones are just to go, look, now you have more choices. See if you can color inside that circle or punch that hole all the way through. Such a good little monkey you are. Number three is Freemasonry. It's an all-male group formed in 1717 in London, and it has six million powerful members across the world. It's, it is alleged that George Washington, Benjamin Franklin, Winston Churchill, Mozart, and Harry Houdini were Freemasons, and they were infamous for secret passwords, secret handshakes, um, designing the pyramids, and plotting the French Revolution. See, people, you see all this revolution stuff, and what you don't realize is there's another definition for a revolution. It means making a, a circuit around something, starting at one point, making a complete circuit, and coming back to the starting point. That's all that revolutions do, children. You may change the faces, but you don't change the general structure. Why? Because people are lazy. Just putting it out there. And I'm not saying that people won't work or anything like that, but when it comes to taking personal responsibility for a lot of stuff, a lot of people are lazy. But there's a law. But, the, but, 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 yeah. Oh, well, moving on. Number four, the Knights Templar. In 1119, nine knights founded the Knights Templar. It was a Catholic military order created to protect pilgrims traveling through the Holy Land, so the story goes, as well as guard the most sacred Christian treasures. Its non-combatant members developed the earliest forms of banking throughout Christendom and built fortifications across Europe and the Holy Land. Though it was disbanded in 1312, it is said that the Freemasons are keeping the flame alive for the Knights Templar. Hmm. Number five, Hashashin. 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 Hmm. I'm not sure how to pronounce that one. But the Hashashins, or the Assassins, one of the most fearsome of all the secret societies in the world, are known for assassinating their religious and political enemies, regardless of the number of security personnel guarding their targets. It is said that the group of legendary contract killers formed in the late 11th century were vanquished by the end of the 13th century, but left its dangerous legacy in today's Syria and Iran. Yes, it's in Syria and Iran, and who are we threatening now? Syria and, and Iran. Hmm, and do Syria and Iran have central banks in them? I don't think so. Hmm, is that a quinky dink? I don't believe in quinky dinks. Number six, the Cadaver Society. Oh, that just sounds nasty all by itself. It's a secret society of students at Washington and Lee University, and it is rumored that underground passageways, which its members use to remain undetected, span the campus. It is speculated that the Cadaver Society serves as a branch of the Illuminati, a group that has control over power, powerful systems like banks and governments. So you have that, that's the dark underbelly of the Illuminati because Illuminati is illuminated ones. So this is the dark underbelly. You, if you have light, you're going to have shadow somewhere. That's just the way it works. And if you have shadow, it's because there's a light somewhere. Number seven, Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn. Wow. 
It was founded in the late 19th century. The Hermetic Order of the Golden Dawn was dedicated to the study of the occult, or the unknown, the paranormal, and metaphysics, and everything considered magical. The order, also known as the Golden Dawn, has been one of the single biggest influences on 20th century Western cult occultism, such as Wicca. Hmm, I'd never heard of them. Number eight, Ordo Templus Orientis. Okay. It's an international fraternal and religious society and is modeled after the Freemasonry structure and centered on a degree of occultism. Many ancient Egyptian gods and the devil are invoked during the rituals, which are sometimes performed naked and use virgin priestesses, children, and priests. How lovely. Not. Number nine, the Rosicrucians. This was founded by a group of German Protestants in the early 15th century, and the Philosophical, Sec yeah, Philosophical Secret Society was perceived as very dangerous at the time, as they reportedly used occult or hidden practices or knowledge to bring about global transformation. It is claimed that they are the guiding force behind every significant revolution in modern history. In other words, they tell you, let's have a revolution, and they give you a face that's going to be the new face as a result. And you're just going to start at point A and go all the way around the circuit and come right back to point A. Doesn't that sound fun? By the way, some of you won't make it to the end because, well, you know, collateral damage. Saf sacrifices must be made. And finally, number 10, the Illuminati. The Illuminated Ones, perhaps the most popular cult of modern society. The Illuminati was formed to end superstition, um, obscurantism, whatever that is, religious influence over public life, and abuses of state power. Made mostly of atheists, it is alleged that they conspire to establish a new world order and gain political power by using the media to brainwash the masses. Well, you know, everybody keeps saying they want to do a new world order. And a new world order, you know, just because someone says there's going to be a new world order, it doesn't necessarily have to be one where all of these oligarchs and assholios, Captain Assholios, if you will, will be in charge of everything. You can have a new world order that is everyone that takes personal responsibility. Wow, what a it, wonderful and quirky idea. Everyone taking responsibility for their own actions, words, and deeds. Wow, that's the new world order that I would go along with. I would not have a problem with that. Stop stealing, period. You know, it really, it, it breaks down. I've said this umpteen gazillion times. It breaks down to stop stealing. You know, when you're lying, you're stealing someone's faith in your, in your good nature, in your ability to tell the truth. When you kill someone, you're stealing their life. When you take someone's property, you're stealing from them, quite obviously. When you slander someone, you are stealing their reputation. Stop stealing. Just stop. Covers all of the bases. It's the only commandment you need. There you go. There's a new world order. That would work for me. Unfortunately, there are a lot out there that, and I know the world the way it is, is still kind of wonky. Awful lot of people still going with all of that. Oh, but it's them people over there, those brown people, or those those white people, or those people that wear sheets, or those people that do this, or those people. They never look in the mirror and see themselves. Never, ever, ever. The golden dong. That's right, Grim. It's the golden dong. <laughs> That's what Lois Lane called uh, Superman. Okay, hmm. moving on. Well, he was a man of steel. Okay, let me put this over on this effing site as well. 
and then I will move along to something a little bit I just I it's like I have to go there at least once a show I have to go to something from worldtruth.tv because he's got such quirky weird stuff and it just grabs me by the eyeballs and jerks me right over there weird it's weird how that works so and it just to me that's oxymoronic secret society if everybody knows about them they aren't very much of a secret only way you keep a secret is not tell it to anyone else it's pretty much the way that works okay I saw something over here on mines and I had to click on it um, it's from luminous sovereign and it was posted way back in March of this year but there's an awful lot of interesting links um, attached to it oh and there's another cool one at the bottom oh I may have to check that so throughout human history as our species has faced the frightening terrorizing fact that we do not know who we are or where we are going in this ocean of chaos it has been the authorities the political the religious the educational authorities who attempted to comfort us by giving us order rules regulations informing forming our minds to their view of reality to think for yourself you must question authority and learn how to put yourself in a state of vulnerable open-mindedness chaotic confused vulnerability to inform yourself think for yourself and question authority Timothy Leary now that's kinda cool yes oh later Vinny you have a wonderful dinner hun I'm still trying to figure out what I'm gonna fix for dinner when I get done on the radio oh and Mark Passio yay or is that the right one okay um, there's lots of really cool really 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 cool links on this ah okay I'm gonna go ahead and share this one if I haven't already nope I haven't and I will put it over on the FN side and then I clicked on one of the links at the bottom of it and I want to read that one as well because then we're going to go on to some more fun stuff don't you know so um, let's see now um, stop believing what you're told is good and find out for yourself stop believing what you're told is evil until you discover the truth for yourself no religion can answer this no political matter no education system no none the answer is within your own mind so start using it stop letting others aka your educators your parents your government make up your mind for you they only hand down to you the ignorance they themselves inherited with whatever wisdom they have as well St so stand up for what is right good and true and it's standing up for yourself when you do that so thank you once again luminous sovereign um, and I finally found yes the whole blog so the way you act is the reaction of the way you think so if you think right you will act right the secret of life is balance and the absence of balance is life's destruction so if you only knew that wisdom is not in the words it's in the knowledge of self and that is why the more man or woman explores him or herself the more powerful or the more power he or she finds within so keep this in mind and beware of committing yourself exclusively to a specific belief so that you disbelieve everything else 
or else you will miss out on much good. In fact, you will miss out on recognizing authentic truth. So do we accept or no, excuse me, need to reread re re this. Back up and start over. Do not accept what you have been spoon-fed. Question your ed educators, parents, and politicians, and be inquisitive. Beyond asking who, what, when, and where, the most important is always why. Why is what explains the rest of it. So demand answers. Just because a television tells you so doesn't mean it is so. Remember that life on the screen is edited. People are paid. Agendas exist. Just as well, you are fake as hell, pretending to be someone you are not every goddamn day. You are not a piece of paper, a birth certificate, a social security number, or a driver's license because no one in their right mind would have signed up for giving their freedom away. No one would agree that profit is more important than taking care of the environment, let alone their own bodies. No one would reject the technology that would end the suppression of all nations. No one has to go hungry. No one has to suffer just to exist in this world. Education is at this point a financial institution, hell-bent on preparing each pupil to be a part of the machine, to become a debtor and join the workforce, get college loans and get a mortgage, buy a new car, pray you have enough left over to go on vacations and to buy that big screen TV to watch those football games on to invite over your friends so you can show off your new stove. Tell yourself this gives your life meaning. If that sounds like all you ever wanted, then I doubt you'd still be reading this. So, anyone who has eyes can see that the world needs change. What you are up against is not real. Its existence is born and maintained in fear. That which requires your belief to exist, not be, not, or but cannot be brought before you, it is not real. It's an illusion. They are just buildings. They are just human beings. There are no governments dividing us. There are no state lines. It's all a construct of the mind. It's just men and women sitting in buildings given authority that you delegated to them. Authority they could not have over you if you did not have the power to give it away. So stop believing what you're told is good and find out for yourself. Stop believing what you're told is evil until you discover the truth for yourself. No religion can answer this. No political matter. No education system. None. The answer is within your own mind. So start using it. All those people, they just hand down their education that they grew up with. However, Every generation allows more freedom and liberty and justice to disappear from the mind of man because people are being spoon-fed and brainwashed by some unseen force backed by our governments, popes, presidents, and prime ministers, politicians, judges, police, and lawyers. They line their pockets with money with the consideration of the return of promises made controlled by the corporations that are far more powerful than we're led to believe. Any can, anyone can see that there is hardly any justice left within the justice system. Those who govern the people are given more power over our daily lives. It's the modern version of Big Brother, and it's frightening to say the least. Yet so few people question the answers given to them by those officials with fancy titles. 
behind the ostensible government sit enthroned an invisible government allowing no allegiance and acknowledging no responsibility to the people to destroy this invisible government to befoul the unholy alliance between corrupt business and corrupt politicians is the first task of the statesmanship of the day that was Theodore Roosevelt April 19th 1906 this is an issue on multi-dimensional levels from the material to the spiritual all is interconnected something that wants to be hidden is put in plain view it's right in your face if you know where to look to understand the control system is to understand the Luciferian connection to defeat the control system the occult needs to be recognized by everybody and once again occult merely means hidden knowledge also um, like a horse with blinkers if you can't understand what is in front of you then you're not going to understand what is happening to you we cannot cannot ignore the occult because we think it negative it is not it is information about how the universe the human psyche and natural law work <laughs> see here we go the word occult simply means hidden from sight something obscured but when people hear this word negative connotations and misconceptions come with it and there's a reason for that it's called the molding of your mind your mind is like play-doh and they are playing with you occult is derived from the latin noun oculus which means i and from the latin verb occultair which means hidden from sight this knowledge of ourselves and how we function has been taken out of the general circulation of humanity and has been reserved for the elect few or I would say select few who have guarded it for selfish usage this has created a powerful differential in society so how we use that knowledge makes it either good or bad and the usages can be for order and goodness love and freedom or for the wielding of power to gain differential advantage to create chaos and evil the latter has been used we need to look at the negative to understand the strategies that have been used to understand what's happening to us so we can be in a position to do something about it the manipulators who understand the positive aspects of this knowledge willfully choose to use it as a weapon against those not in the know by continuing to occult it when the manipulation tactics are known it becomes common sense knowledge and only then will humanity ever be free when we de occult this knowledge the occult is no longer the occult and it is brought out into the light of day thank you luminous sovereign we do need to think for ourselves act for ourselves take responsibility for ourselves but it has been a progressive ongoing molding for generations if not centuries so open-mindedness chaotic confused vulnerability to inform yourself oh really <clears throat> thank you fluky okay yeah I know Grimmy it's just it's real shocking that there might be lies on tell lie vision it's a shocker I know okay let me put this over on the F and site where did I put it there it is I've opened so many tabs now and then 
I'm going to get to another one. Which do I wish to... Yeah. Okay. And... There we go. Okay. Uh, first one I'm going to go with is from ntknetwork.com. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's from last week. Um, Sally Yates, uh, DOJ ordered FBI not to overtly investigate Clinton Foundation. Now, if you really want to see, this is how they play that game. You know, it's all behind the scene. It's all behind the curtains. And they put on a show. You know, Shakespeare was right. All the world's a stage. And we are merely players. And we have our little cues as to when it's time for us to walk across that stage and when it's not. And, yeah, they're all, they're all just playing their parts. But Deputy Attorney General Sally Yates revealed that the DOJ instructed federal investigators to hold back on an open probe in the Clinton Foundation in 2016. That's according to the Department of Justice Inspector General report released on last Thursday. So, according to the document, the FBI was investigating the Clintons' ostensibly charitable organization ahead of the election, contrary to contemporaneous reports that the DOJ did not open a probe into the Clinton Foundation. Now, numerous witnesses told us that agents involved in the Clinton Foundation investigation were instructed to take no overt investigative steps prior to the election. That's according to the Inspector General. Yates confirmed and defended this revelation. Yeah, I think there was discussion about, look, if agents on the Clinton Foundation investigation want to go do record stuff, and stuff that you can do covertly, fine, but not overtly. And the sort of thought being, we'll address that again at the end, after the election is over. Now, the Deputy Attorney General cited that the DOJ investigation into Paul Manafort as evidence that this was standard practice. I had a lengthy discussion with McCabe at least once maybe more about how important it was at the time that our Manafort investigation not be overt. But the Manaf Manafort investigation became public in a CNN report in August of 2016, several months before the election. And Yates's orders regarding the Manafort case apparently went unheeded. Well, Trump's fired Yates in his first month on the job after she refused to defend the president's travel ban. Hmm. Imagine that. All kinds of skullduggery going on, and that's because people are not being held accountable. Period. What's that? Okay. Frumpy is not a happy camper, it looks like. Okay, get this shared over on the effing site. And then we will move along, because I have another one just to kind of let you know. This, this has been in the works for a while. So... Um, from greenmedinfo.com and it is from March the 12th of this year. Fluoride literally turns the pineal gland to stone or so the research suggests. The pineal gland has been known as the seat of the soul for hundreds of years so could fluoride a ubiquitous vector of toxicity in the modern world, actually be calcifying this gland and literally turning it to stone? Well, research published in 2001 showed that fluoride deposits in the pineal gland with age and is associated with enhanced gland calcification. 
11 aged con uh, cadavers were dissected and now their pineal glands assayed. Now there was a positive correlation between pineal fluoride and pineal calcific or calcium, but no, no correlation between pineal fluoride and bone fluoride. So, this is not the first research to implicate fluoride in contributing to so-called ectopic calcification or the calcification of soft tissue. We addressed this in a previous report on the potential for fluoride to calcify the arteries, which, a hey, hardening of the arteries, keep drinking that fluoridated water, yeah, and taking that medication from Big Pharma, brought to you by Big Pharma. So, what is the pineal gland? Well, it's a small endocrine gland in the vertebrae brain, and it's sometimes called the third eye as a light-sensitive, central-located organ with cellular features resembling the human retina. One article describes the role of the pineal gland as, um, it's the role of the non-visual non photoreception is to synchronize periodic functions of living organisms to the environmental light periods in order to help survival of various species in different biotopes. Okay, I understood every bit of that, uh-huh. But the pi pineal gland is best known for its role in producing the hormone melatonin from serotonin triggered by the absence of light and affects wake and sleep patterns and seasonal circadian rhythms. So like a tiny pea-sized pine cone, it's located near the center of the brain between the two hemispheres and is a unique brain structure insofar as it is not protected by the blood-brain barrier, which really sucks. This may also explain why it's uniquely sensitive to calcification via fluoride exposure. But it's more than an endocrine gland. Technically, the mammalian pineal gland is neural tissue, and the cells within the pineal gland, or the yeah, that word, have characteristics that resemble the photoreceptor cells in the retina. And this has given rise to the opinion that it should be reclassified. The pineal gland has been the subject of much interest since ancient times. Galen described it in the 3rd century, and the philosopher René de Descartes, or Descartes identified the pineal gland as the seat of the soul, and his explanation for this conclusion was quite interesting. My view is that this gland is the principal seat of the soul, and the place in which all our thoughts are formed. The reason I believe this is that I cannot find any part of the brain except this which is not double. Since we see only one thing with two eyes and hear only one voice with two ears and, in short, have never more than one thought at a time, it must necessarily be the case that the impressions which enter by the two eyes or by the two ears and so on unite with each other in some part of the body before being considered by the soul. Now, it is impossible to find such a place in the whole head except this gland. Moreover, it is situated in the most suitable possible place for this purpose, in the middle of the concavities, concavities. And it is supported and surrounded by the little branches of the carotid arteries which bring the spirits into the brain. Ah, that was Descartes, or Descartes. De, Descartes, however you pronounce his name. I know I butchered it. Now, he was one of the few philosophers who was experienced in vivisection and anatomy, and who rightly pointed out the unique nature of the pineal gland's location in the brain and blood supply. The third eye is also a well-known symbol in Eastern literature and may be concretely grounded in the anatomical structure and function of the pineal gland. Now, the pineal gland calcifications upon dissection resemble gravel, 
and are composed of calcite or calcium hydroxylapatite, okay, the latter of which is not unlike dentin or bone. Wow, that's kind of... Hi, Miss Chloe. Oh, he's having... Frumpy's having fun with his phone service. Drop kick him. I dropped Bell a long time ago. Back to this. So, by pineal gland calcification is associated with a number of diseases in the medical literature. Number one is Alzheimer's. Number two, bipolar. Number three, circadian dysregulation. Number four is hormone imbalances or low melatonin. Number five is insomnia. Number six is low back pain. Go figure, everything's connected. Number seven, Parkinson's disease. Number eight, schizophrenia. Number nine, sleep disorders. And number 10, stroke. Now, fluoride as a therapeutic neurotoxin? Yeah. Now that it's been established that fluoride exposure contributes to the calcification of the pineal gland, the question remains. What are the subjective effects of, the, of these tissue changes to those who undergo them? Now, Prozac may represent the archetypal example of how fluoride affects the personality or soul. This drug, chemical name floxetine, is approximately 30% fluoride by weight and marketed as an antidepressant even while a major side effect of its use and or withdrawal is suicidal depression. And I happen to know some people that were on Prozac and had to gradually wean themselves off of it, and they said that was the hardest thing that they have ever, ever done. And they're still dealing with side effects. One person was on it for 17 years before she started reading up on it and it took her a year and a half to wean herself off of it and she's still having occasional issues so nasty nasty juju stuff now modern psychi psychiatry often treats depression disorders or the dark night of the soul as an organic disorder of the brain targeting serotonin reuptake by the chemical means necessary and fluoride and Floxetine, in fact, may accomplish their intended therapeutic effects by poisoning the pineal gland. Now, see, I think anytime you have to poison another part of the body in order to make one part, you're basically fucking up the whole damn connection system. Stop it. If it's going to have adverse effects, if, if something says it has adverse effects, stay away from it. Period. Now, animal studies confirm that um, when mice have their pineal glands removed, they no longer respond flo to uh, floxetine. And perhaps the primary reason why Prozac causes a favorable reaction in those who are treated or poisoned with it is that it disassociates that person from the psycho-spiritual conflicts that they must normally suppress in order to maintain the appearance of sanity and functionality in a society. Yeah, this society. Go figure. In other words, it is control and not health that is the goal of such treatment. So if Prozac and other sources of fluoride in our environment deposits with the pineal gland accelerate the transformation of functional pineal tissue into calcification, is it possible that it works by dehumanizing and flattening the effects of those who are under its influence? And I can tell you, those that were on Prozac, that's pretty much the way they described. It, it numbed them. It flattened everything out. They had no peaks and valleys. It, everything was just flat. That's not good. So how do you prevent pineal gland calcification? Well, number one is you eliminate the exposure to fluoride 
and you can start that by being careful about surreptitious forms of fluoride in like Teflon and foods and beverages produced with municipal water, tap water, inf infant formula, fluoride containing drugs like Prozac, toothpaste, the list goes on. Yeah, and if you look at toothpaste, it says harmful if swallowed. Please contact Poison Control Hotline. Yeah, if you swallow toothpaste. Scary stuff. We've collected a number of studies from the U.S. National Library of Medicine on natural substances that mitigate fluoride toxicity. And we also have a section on our database dedicated to finding substances that prevent or reverse other forms of pathological calcification, which may have relevance for pineal gland calcification, such as ectopic calcification. And lastly, there is research on the potential value of magnesium and uh, phytate, P-H-Y-T-A-T-E, in reducing pineal gland calcification. Fluoride has a wide range of adverse effects, and there's indexes with over 60 diseases linked to this ubiquitous toxic or toxicant in the Green Med Info database. But based on research presented here, one new way of describing its adverse effects is as a calcifier of the soul. So, check out their articles, their research, all kind of other fun stuff on Green Med Info. They really do have quite a bit of really interesting stuff. Yeah. Ooh, frumpy. Wow. That sounds rather painful, hun. He is not happy with Bell. And you know, it's not just Okay, there's Bell Labrador Laboratories and Southwestern Bell and it rings a bell. <laughs> Makes me wonder, hmm, how many finger or how many pies do they have their fingers in? Okay. So, now that I've gotten to the two that I had to get to today, this is one that Tessa sent me. And I just got to do it because, well, number one, it's Florida. So, sock. And Kate, <laughs> they live among you. And be concerned, especially you, Sock. Because, yeah. Uh, it was posted the 17th of June. This is from WKBN.com. Apparently, a Florida woman shoots husband in the testicles after he tries to take the air conditioner. You know, that's not the kind of hot mama she was really looking to be considered as. This was in Lake City, Florida. This Florida woman is accused of shooting her husband in the testicles, and she's back in jail after failing to show up to court. Police said Kimberly Dunn, 35, lost her cool, literally, when her husband and his brother came to her Lake City home last year to pick up an air conditioning unit that she was trying to sell on Facebook. The couple was going through divorce at the time. According to the report, Dunn sat on the unit to prevent the two men from taking it, and when her husband tried to get her off of the AC, she tried to fend him off with a stun gun, then fired around at her now ex-husband's testicle, testicles using a handgun. Oh, so the stun gun wasn't enough. You had to use a handgun to do it. Okay. Her husband's brother was able to restrain Dunn and take his brother to the hospital, and police said her husband picked up the gun and brought it with him to the hospital. Dunn was arrested that day and booked into the Columbia County Jail without incident, and she later told investigators she did not intend to shoot her husband. She only wanted to scare him. 
On Thursday, Dunn was jailed for failing to show up to court and now faces an additional charge of contempt of court. Well, I'm thinking shooting someone in the family jewels is pretty contemptible to start with. You know, especially over a frickin' AC unit. Now, there's other things. There's There are reasons to shoot someone in the family jewels. I will admit to that. You know, like, you you trying to play with a little kid or something like that? Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, hell yeah. All your dangly bits would be missing. Just putting that out there. But seriously, over an AC that you obviously were no longer using? Hmm. Divorces can be ugly. I am so thankful mine was not that ugly. Whew. Mine didn't get ugly until afterwards. <laughs> Oy. Yep. Oh, trying to help her live up to being a hot wife. Thank you, Sock. See, I misinterpreted it, and you straightened it out for me. Thank you ever so much, hon. See, that's why I like having you around. You always straighten me out. <laughs> I'm still thinking. Stun gun would have been bad enough. But, man, that's just not not cool. <laughs> Pun intended. Oh, ow. That's definitely an ow. Owie. Grammy, I don't see a stunning emo a stunning emoticon. <laughs> okay, I can I'll do this. Oh, I see that fart one now. Cool. <laughs> Squirrel. Okay. Um my Twitter is going nuts again. Yes, Twitter. And the Donald. Oh, and Trump will still skin. Okay, that's it. I gotta close Twitter. Um, damn, Trump will still skin and Slick Willy. Both. Ugh. Okay. So, which one? How to be healthier, happier, and more productive from the Wall Street Journal. Nah. How about this one? This one sounds a lot more fun. This is from HighTimes.com, by the way. Uh, <laughs> oh, really now? <laughs> He's such a naughty boy, sock puppet. Okay, from HighTimes.com. It was from posted last week. Crystals and cannabis overlap in more ways than you'd think. Well, let's have some fun, shall we? By day, the Ace of Diamonds quartz crystal mine uh, mines piles of tailings, which is the rocks dug out and left over from large crystal excavations, and they sparkle in the sun. Slivers of what almost looks like glass buried in the dried mud shimmer across the property. And it's a welcome breeze that always seems to cool a sweaty brow at the exact right moment. People of all ages clamor up and down the dusty piles of rubble looking for the errant shiny gems or smash chunks of rock out on the ledge with sledgehammers in search of crystals. By night, smoke from campfires give the area the smell of burned wood and roasted hot dogs. Patrons sporting old Megadeth and GNR t-shirts with bandanas tied around their heads sit passing blunts back and forth. Tents in all sizes and colors dot the hillside, giving the place the feeling of a Grateful Dead show after party, and the air tastes sweet. This is just one of the crystal mines I escape to when the city gets to be too much. Four and a half hour drive north of New York City to the Herkimer region, you'll find families, couples, solo folks, divorcees, the young, the old, the weird, the wonderful, the pink haired, the hip, and the super stoned, all coming together at this and other area mines to dig double-terminated quartz crystals just a few feet away from each other. 
Now this special crystal, also known as the Herkimer Diamond, after the name of the town it was found in, hides in the Dolo Stone and mud and is only found in a few places, namely in Iraq and Herkimer, New York, along routes 28 and 29. Oh, that is very pretty. It's very pretty. I found this haven after finding another unique orb, one in my left breast. Oops. My husband and I spent many weekends smashing into the cliffs with wedges and five-pound hammers, slamming out our frustrations and fears. We spent the evening smoking uh, killer ganja by firelight and enjoying credible views of the night sky with no light pollution to compete with the starlight. Every time I return, I meet the interesting, often stoned people who dig crystals alongside me, folks with stories to tell, most of them seeming to be running away from something. There was the young couple who couldn't conceive but spent years trying to, then finally decided to have a lot of money and pets instead. They smoked cannabis and played instruments late into the night, and then there was the couple who had taken a respite from parenting their seven children, one named Adventurine after a green stone, and the man told us stories about having been shot at and stabbed over the years and was currently suffering from severe back pain and walking with a cane. He and his tattooed wife toked blunts and blasted Aerosmith loudly into the wee hours. I met the man with the cat on a leash who told me about how he ran away from home at 15 to work in a carnival. He was covered in tattoos, and I could practically smell the sweaty or the sweat musty familiar smell of my old friend cannabis on him. Oh, sweet smell, excuse me. Read it right, Grams. I met a rich guy from Idaho who drives up every summer to unearth some of the largest, most perfect crystals I've ever seen, many the size of softballs and bananas. Oh? And I'm sure if he smokes, or I'm not sure if he smokes, but he seems like he has at least inhaled. I met the older fellow who owns a place, and he looks like Jerry Garcia reincarnated. If he doesn't smoke, I'll go lay down in the road and let the local horse and buggies take turns running over my ankles. So like the people who have so much in common and come to hide out, hang out, drop out, and dig out beautiful crystals, I realize that crystals and cannabis have much in common. Like cannabis, Crystals have been used for eons to calm, entertain, mystify, heal, and bond people. A piece of hemp cord was found in a pottery remnant of an ancient village that was over 10,000 years old. Pot's been around for ages and doesn't seem to be going anywhere anytime soon. Crystals and cannabis are both wonders of nature. Cannabis is a plant that grows in the ground. Crystals are created when hot liquids cool and solidify. They often cool in a uniform manner, which creates a pattern that creates the crystal structure. Cannabis leaves also grow in a pattern. Both cannabis and crystals are often found growing in soil. Cannabis and crystals can be had for free or purchased for a small fortune, depending on your need and desire. Now, when I was a kid growing up in Maine, we would buy a brown paper grocery bag of stems and leaves for $10, which we could smoke uh, or use to make brownies with. And I've also grown my own and found plants wild in the woods. Okay, so maybe I borrowed a bud or so from the plants that I found, though they were probably had their owners, and I'm not talking about squirrels. <coughs> Squirrel! And purchased varying amounts ranging from $5 a joint to an ounce for $120. Now I've found crystals in the mud, rocks, and dirt. I've found crystals on the side of the road. 
in thrift stores for next to nothing and have been given some by friends. I've paid ten to twenty dollars to dig my own at mines and I've seen them for sale in stores like CB2 and Urban Outfitters and on Etsy for anywhere from ten to three hundred dollars including an actual Herkimer diamond. So as they're called or as they're called uh, for one thousand five hundred seventy four dollars and ninety nine cents and up. That's an awful lot for a crystal. So though they are both essentially free if you're willing to grow or find your own, they can also be costly if you wish. They're both beautiful and I guess this one depends on who you ask. Some politicians or anti-cannabis folks may disagree but most honest people would say that cannabis plants are lovely with their vast variety of colors and strains. In fact, the juiciest, perhaps most lovely and most stonerific part of the marijuana plant are the trichomes, aka the crystals, which hold the most THC. Now crystal stones also have a breathtaking assortment of colors, sizes, and shapes and are wonderful to look at and hold though their odor isn't as remarkable or as pungent as marijuana, they often smell like faint earth or nothing at all or patchouli if you find them in a stoner's glove compartment and they are also beautiful. Now crystals are said to vibrate at a certain frequency by some aficionados though science doesn't tend to agree and marijuana gives pretty much anyone who tries it a buzz. <laughs> I reached out to st a store called The Dragon and the Rose that boasts the largest selection of Wiccan, Pagan, and metaphysical supplies in Orange County on their website and briefly chatted with the store manager, Addie, who confirmed that much of their clientele are pro-cannabis. Bongs and pipes are made of crystal as well as other paraphernalia um, or beads and pendulums can be found with these on Google search such as a, a unicorn pipe carved out of rose quartz and other stores such as Oregon Valley Cannabis and Virtue Supply Company out, both out of Portland Oregon display crystals and rocks among their marijuana wares a thoughtful bridge between the two communities you know, it's hard to miss the connection between cannabis and crystals unless you're really trying not to look. If you happen to be a fan of one and not the other, with the current peak in popularity for both cannabis and crystals, now is a fine time to spend a few quality moments considering the parallels between these two spectacular forces of nature, perhaps with a pipe in one hand and a crystal in the other. It's a simple, fun pastime. If you're a smoker, imbibe using your favorite method. Grab a spade and spend a little time scruffling around in the dirt where you're f near your favorite waterfall or at the base of some of your beloved thinking tree. And if you're a crystal fan, vape up, hold your favorite stone in your hand and meditate on whatever pops into your head you'll surely begin to see the overlap in crystals and cannabis, even if they exist solely in your mind. Well, that was kind of a fun little romp. Thank you, Jessica Delfino. And yeah, I do like them both. Oh man, there are some plants that are just absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous. But once again, if I partake, it's because I'm ready to go take a nap and I'm, I'm having a hard time going to sleep because <laughs> that's all it does for me. It makes me very, very sleepy and I can sleep really good. And I'm not complaining. <gasps> Rob Works just fired up the bubbler. Sweet! Thank you, Rob. Uh. 
Okay. One day in the future, Donald Trump has a heart attack and dies. Ah, well, hmm. Uh, I think it happens to us all. Trumple's stillskin is no different from any of the other ones. I'm not a Trumple's fan at all, but I don't... I really don't wish death on... A lot of it is, I think, because then they're getting off easy. You know, they don't have to deal with the repercussions of the bullshit that they're putting everyone else through. So, yeah. I would just as soon have him stick around and have to deal with the bullshit. Okay. Got that shared. Back to my pocket I go. So, yes. Ah. Okay. <clears throat> Where do I want to go? <laughs> How about... <coughs> excuse me. I pick on... I'll just pick on Monsatan. How's that sound? This is from the Daily Mail from a couple days ago. <laughs> oh, Grim... Uh -uh. It's not that it's really not all that funny. Sorry. It's like, yeah, so probably that's probably what will happen. Oh well. I would just assume they have to deal with some of the bullshit they throw on the rest of us first, so before they get to leave this earthly coil. Okay, from the dailymail.co.uk Cancer suffering groundsman, 46, who has months to live, will testify against Roundup in first ever trial over the weed killer's links to cancer. So, a terminally ill man is the first to take Roundup to trial, claiming that the weed killer is responsible for giving him cancer. D. Wayne Johnson, 46, who worked as a groundskeeper for the school district in Benicia, California, is that how you say that? Said that he mixed and sprayed hundreds of gallons of Roundup to keep grass and weeds under control. Johnson doesn't have long to live, having been diagnosed with non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, a cancer that starts in the white blood cells. That was in August of 2014, and it has spread since then. Now, under California law, dying patients have a right to an expedited trial, and Johnson's begins on Monday, or just this, ooh, since, was this just this last Monday, or does it start next Monday? The father of two claims that there is an ingredient in Roundup that causes cancer, and that Monsatan did not adequately warn consumers, while the company has vehemently denied the product was carcinogenic. Okay, it's designed to kill. Oh, I didn't read the joke. One day in the future, Donald Trump has a heart attack and dies. Joke. Hmm. So. Okay. Oh, that's the title. Oh. Okay. I will get to that after Dwayne and his trial. Oh my God. Oh, bless his heart. Ugh. Now, glyphosate is marketed, okay, excuse me, the main ingredient in Roundup is a chemical compound called glyphosate, and it's marketed either as a salt or an amber-colored liquid with no smell. Monsatan introduced it in 1974 as an effective way of killing weeds while leaving crops and plants intact. Glyphosate-based products are sold in more than 160 countries, and farmers use it on 250 types of crops in California alone, which is the leading farming state in the U.S. I did not realize that, but apparently, if you say so. In March of 2015, the World Health Organization found that the herbicide is probably carcinogenic to humans. Now, 
In 20, yeah, 2017, California named glyphosate an ingredient that causes cancer under the state's Proposition 65, which requires Roundup to carry a warning label if sold in California. Additionally, earlier this year, a peer-reviewed study found that women in agriculture-intense areas of Indiana tended to have shorter pregnancies if they had been regularly exposed to glyphosate. Glyphosate is the most heavily used herbicide worldwide, but the extent of exposure in human pregnancies remains unknown, researchers in Indiana University wrote in the journal Environmental Health. Monsanton, the chemicals maker, filed an appeal after losing in court to block the California labeling, arguing that Roundup doesn't cause cancer. Do you have proof positive that it does not? because I think they squelch any kind of investigation into anything that may show that it does. The company said the product has undergone stringent testing and more than 800 studies have established its safety. A lot of those studies, if you read some of the testing and if you look at all of the results, not just the ones that they included in the findings, because they are rather selective in what information they include in their findings, yeah, and check out some of the studies that have been done overseas, you know, where Monsanto doesn't nearly have the death grip that it does here in USA. We have empathy for anyone suffering from cancer, but scientific evidence clearly shows that glyphosate was not the cause. That's from Scott Partridge, who is Monsanto's vice president of strategy. They have a vice president of strategy. Wow. We look forward to presenting this evidence to the court. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In a filing, Monsatan said non-Hodgkin's non lymphoma can take many years to form and that the company says the period between Johnson's first exposure in 2012 and his diagnosis in 2014 precludes any possible causal connection here. Ah, but what you guys don't understand is a lot of times this stuff speeds up the process. Anything that is a poison breaks down the immune system which speeds up the process for the um, physical expression of whatever dis-ease is going on. Johnson is unable to speak or move in some, or on some days, and 80% of his body is covered in lesions. This is according to CNN. <laughs> and according to his doctors, there is, a sub there is substantial medical doubt of survival beyond six months. Wow. But there's a lot of weight resting on this trial. Despite more than 800 people suing Monsanto over the past year, Johnson will be the first to step foot in a courtroom. The trial is the canary in the coal mine, says Tim Litzenberg, who is a lawyer representing Johnson. And the world is watching, and it's unofficially a bellwether case. This means jo if Johnson wins his case, it could be followed by several years of litigation and large damage claims paid by Monsanto. However, if Monsanto wins, other cases could be delayed or thrown out altogether and pressure will be lifted off the company. I hope, I hope he does win. Just because there's lots and lots and lo lots of information that they're trying to squelch. Okay, let me put this on in the effing site, and then I will go check out the joke. That was the headline. I know, I get it. I got several of you tell me. Thank you, Box and Grimm, for telling me. That was the headline. <sighs> Monsatan. And now, Monsa Bear Monsatan or Ma Monsatan Bear? Which is it? 
Okay. From Pox and Grimm and whoever else posted originally over in the RLM chat. Thank you, gentlemen, from reddit.com. So, <clears throat> posted in their politics, apparently, and their jokes section. One day in the future, Donald Trump has a heart attack and dies. Okay. He immediately goes to hell where the devil is waiting for him. I don't know what to do here, says the devil. You're on my list, but I have no room for you. Well, you definitely have to stay here, so I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I've got three folks here who weren't quite as bad as you, and I'll let one of them go, but you have to take their place. I'll even let you decide who leaves. Well, the Donald thought that sounded pretty good, so the devil opened the door to the first room. And it was good old Bracky, Dangleberry Obama, and a large pool of water. Barack kept diving in and surfacing empty-handed. Over and over he dived in and surfaced with nothing. Such was his fate in hell. No, Donald said, I don't think so. I'm not a good swimmer, and it would ruin my hair. I don't think I could do that all day long. Well, the devil led him to the door in the next room, and in it was Al Gore with a sledgehammer and a room full of rocks. And all he did was swing that hammer time after time after time. No, this is no good. I've got his or this problem with my shoulder. It would be in constant agony if I could, if all I could do was break rocks all day. So the devil opened the third door, and through it, Donald saw Bill Clinton lying on the bed, his arms tied over his head, and his legs restrained in a spread eagle pose. And bent over him was Mon Monica Lewinsky, doing what she does best. Now, the Donald looked at this in shocked disbelief and finally said, Yeah, man, I can handle this. And the devil smiled and said, Okay, Monica. You're free to go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, guys. <laughs> Bayer Satan. There you go, Grim. That's a good one. Bear your Satan. Beth, honey, you just keep befriending them ducks, and I keep clicking over here just after you befriend a duck. Dang. Beth is a fellow duck lover. Okay, I'm thinking, yeah, it's about time I go check out the pig. See what happened this date in history. By the way, just a quick reminder, um, Vinny will be on noon Eastern Time or 1, one o'clock Eastern Time. I think it's 1 o'clock Eastern Time on Friday for the uh, Ponder Gander. Vinny, the infamous Vinny. And uh, I will be back Friday for the Freaker Friday edition of, Fri of the Rocket Chair. And Grimmy and Moose Girl will be on Friday evening after me with the Freaker's Ball. So, yeah, all kind of stuff going on. Plus, there's all kinds of replays going on on RLM. And God knows who's going to pop in just for a while and, and play some silliness. And I don't know, are, uh, Vinny, are you and Flasher going to continue doing the Dork Table on Saturdays? That would be cool. I'm not inside to listen, but because it's morning, and that's the best time for me to get out and and uh, get some work done in the yard before it gets too hot. But um, I would like to know if you could let me know in the chat. Oh my goodness! Okay, and this is from Pig Gazette, and it is their picture of the day, and yeah, yeah. You think you're badass? Try and out badass this. <laughs> okay. Yes. Oh, 1 p.m. Eastern for Vinny. Thank you, Grim. Thank you for Ponder Gander. Where, where Vinny ganders and ponders and wanders and he just he's just Vinny. Okay, the word of the day is self-respect. It is an inner strength earned through blood, sweat, and tears and taking no crap from anyone. And 
the an it's the antonym of self esteem. Yeah. Yeah, I can see how that would be. Now here in their quotable quotes section, another one from Dr. Hurd. Common sense is basically the application of simple reasoning to everyday life. Common sense is not enough for a complex area of specialization. You can't use common sense to do brain surgery or build a rocket or cure an illness or create a microchip. But in everyday life, we all need common sense and fewer and fewer of us seem to be using it. Now, in their tasty tidbits, also from drherd.com, why did common sense die? As I watched a woman walking on a narrow or on the narrow shoulder of a busy highway with triplets in a stroller, looking annoyed that she has to deal with all this danger and traffic, I asked myself once again, whatever happened to common sense? Then the question we never ask occurred to me, why has common sense died? In order to answer it, you first have to ask yourself, what is common sense? Well, common sense is basically the application of simple reasoning to everyday life. But there's probably no one answer here. And the closest answer I know is a decline of reason as to where common sense went. So you can look at many families or couples interact or how our political or political and social discourse now occurs and see that reason has mostly gone by the wayside. Business transactions are usually more rational but not what they used to be or could be. Most agree on that. It's tempting to blame the death of common sense on today's smartphones, which are really computers. Everybody is spending most of their time looking at these pocket computers instead of utilizing their reasoning. However, common sense has been in decline for much longer than the era of smartphones. The first iPhone went on sale about 2007, but back in 1994, Philip K. Howard wrote the national bestseller entitled The Death of Common Sense, and the book resonated with millions, so the issue predates smartphones. What's that sock? With the average person in America, if you're looking for for the forest of common sense, it's the one with the fewest trees. Ah, that is, yeah, that's a good one, Sock. Yeah, that's a good one. And sadly, a lot of those people that really, really need common sense, they're believers in using Roundup on their yard <laughs> and killing off those little bitty trees that are trying to grow. Hmm, therefore, no forest. No common sense. No. Mm. Okay. So, okay, back to this. What was, there was I at. Okay. So, reason's decline is a slow, tortured, and highly incremental thing. It's not so much that people consciously reject reason as they gradually replace reason with something else. So, what's the something else? The all, only alternative to reason is unreasoned emotion, feelings, divorced from reason. Now, there's nothing inherently wrong or bad about feelings. As a psychotherapist, I'm the first one to acknowledge that. But just as it's wrong to reject feelings, it's equally wrong to use feelings as your primary or sole tool of knowing what's true. Today, more and more people do that, hence the dawning of the age of the snowflake. The rational person feels things, but before blurting out his feelings or accepting a feeling as automatically valid and true, a rational person stops to think and consider. It's the stopping, thinking, and considering that's so lacking today. 
and while smartphones slash social media have argu excuse me, arguably made the problem worse, the problem existed well before smartphones and social media. Now consider the woman walking with her triple baby carriage in the middle of traffic. It sounds crazy, but I see it all the time. I live in a summer resort and people pile into the town June through August. Most of them are well educated and many are significantly well off. They should be among the best and brightest. But you can see the look of angry frustration on the faces of these people who are resentful that cars on a busy highway are preventing them from taking a stroll or getting to the beach. It's a metaphor for so many other things. If their expressions could talk, I think they'd say something like, I should not have to be dealing with this. How dare these people be in my way? It's a sense of unearned entitlement. And that's what fuels the death of common sense. The substitution of unreasoned emotion for what should have been rational thinking is the underlying issue. But what adds fuel to the fire is the sense of unearned entitlement. Basically, unearned entitlement tells us, if I feel something, then it should be true, and treated by others as true. And that's what's behind these people refusing to exercise their common sense. I shouldn't have to think about it. I should just be taken care of. Well, how? Somehow. By whom? Someone who's able to do it. Someone else. So if you want to understand why things have gone so wrong in a society with so little excuse for it to have happened, this is it. And the solution? Well, more rational thinking. Reason and self-responsibility are the antidotes to emotionalism and entitlement. It should be happening in schools, but it's not. Should be happening in most families, but more and more young people emerge from their families and schools with the emotionalism and false entitlement that are toxic and fatal to reason. It's a cultural problem that starts as an individual problem. Not with all, but regrettably with most. Now we can't go on like this. Maybe articles and ideas like this one will have more of an impact once the crisis grows to a point where people know we've got to do something different. At times, I think that's starting to happen. Before long, I'm sure we'll know. Well, thank you, Dr. Hurd. That was pretty good. Now, this date in history, the 20th of June, 1898. Because the island was just sitting there, the U.S. Navy seizes the island of Guam on the way to the Philippines to fight the Spanish. Well, you know, finders keepers, losers weepers. And this date in history, the 20th of June, 1949, Congress passes Central Intelligence Agency Act, trench coats not included. And the shit just started rolling downhill as if in an avalanche. Thanks ever so much for that one. Okay. I think I will go back to my pocket, see if I have one more thing in there that I want to get to. Um... Okay, this is from mnhopkins.blogspot.com, Stranger in a Strange Land, and it was originally posted in February of 2014. Our strategy should not only, um, should be not only to confront empire, but to lay siege to it, to deprive it of oxygen, to shame it, to mock it, 
with our art, our music, our literature, our stubbornness, our joy, our brilliance, our sheer relentlessness, and our ability to tell our own stories. Stories that are different from the ones we are being brainwashed to believe. The corporate revolution will collapse if we refuse to buy what they're selling, their ideas, their version of history, their wars, their weapons, their notion of inevitability. Remember this, we be many and they be few. They need us more than we need them. Another world is not only possible, she is on her way, and on a quiet day, I can hear her breathing. Now that's from Arundhati Roy. I hope I didn't butcher that too much. But yeah, it's not inevitable. You just got to quit going for their bullshit. What's that from? Oh, they ran out of common sense modules years ago. <laughs> They're on back order. <laughs> I don't doubt that one bit. I really don't. Wow. It's kind of sad. Kind of sad. Okay. Now. Let me see. I'll close the pig and close your jo uh No, I'll leave the joke open. I may share that a couple places. That is kind of a sick and wrong joke, though. Kind of sick and wrong. Okay. Ew. No. Okay. There's some really weird ass things over here on UPI. I'm just going to read you some of the headlines because, man, okay. Uh, Dream of Green leads to lottery luck for a Maryland man. Apparently, he bought a. a uh, he had a dream about green. Okay, I'm just going to go there because that does kind of look interesting. Um. Maryland man said that he had a dream about the color green, which led him to choose a lottery ticket that won him $1 million jackpot. Cool. The 34-year-old tree specialist, <laughs> uh, go figure, told the Maryland lottery officials that he was at SN Beer and Wine in Germantown this month when he remembered a dream that he'd had three months earlier. I stopped at the Beer and Wine store um, to play as I was heading home after work, he said. And the first few tickets I bought didn't add up to much, but before I picked another one, a dream I had back in March popped into my head. And he said his memory of the dream was a bit hazy, but he recalled the feeling of winning and the image of the color green. I always figured the green part was the green of cash, but when I was about to buy m one last ticket, I saw win big, and it was green. The man said the $20 scratch-off ticket turned out to be a $1 million winner. He said my hands were shaking, my heart was pounding so hard, and I got very nervous all of a sudden. I hurried home to show my wife, and she had the exact same reaction. The shaking, the heart, everything. The man said that he and his wife planned to use their newfound fortune to make a down payment on a new home and save for their children's college funds. Don't send their kids to child. Don't send them to college, hon. Send them to a trade school. Seriously. Because college ain't worth doodly shit anymore. Trade schools. There is always demand for people in the trades. Always. And out here, they make damn good money. Okay. Uh, dun 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 dun. I'm just about out of time, but I think I have, I will read you a few of the headlines. I'm not gonna, uh, there's a couple of them that there's no freaking way I'm going to them, but, okay. Now this, uh, once again, well, shit, it refreshed. Ah, let's see this one. Florida! <laughs> Deputies remove alligator from woman's front doorstep. Huh, it's a cute little bugger. Not for long. 
Apparently, police in Florida responded to a home where an alligator turned up on the doorstep and proved to be not very cooperative. Apparently, um, they responded to the home of a woman who reported discovering an alligator on her front doorstep. Now, the young alligator was not very cooperative with deputies. And the sheriff said on the Facebook post, which, ooh, was it arrested for resisting arrest? The alligator was relocated to a more suitable habitat. And the spokesman for the police department said they gave the alligator a trespass warning and a personal escort to his new home near Lake Seminole. Okay. Naughty, naughty little gator. Now, I know the next one is not going to know. Because, I, yeah, doctor pulls a live cockroach out of a patient's ear. Ew, I have heard of such things happening. I'm not going to read that one. I'm just not. Um... Man finds rattlesnake hiding in his cart at Walmart. You can find just about anything at Walmart. In Missouri, no less. Whoa. Okay, gentlemen. This one's for you. From UPI. 2,505 naked women break skinny dipping world record. There is a video attached. Okay, what is going on? My computer, there we go. Apparently, on June the 11th, organizers of an annual skinny dipping event in Ireland announced this year's dip involved a record-breaking 2,505 naked women taking a swim. The Strip and Dip, an annual event at... Uh, at the Maguramore, Maguramore, good God, I have no idea. It's a beach in County Wicklow, broke the Guinness World Record on Saturday when all these women shed their clothes and spent at least five minutes in the chilly water. Pop-up timers were everywhere. Organizers said that they bested the previous world record for the mass skinny dip, which was set three years ago in Western Australia, where... 786 nude bathers took the plunge. Apparently, the event raised more than $342,000 for cancer charity. I would not be giving money to cancer charity. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, poxified, yeah. Your headphones are buggy. And yeah, and my, ah, my opera is being a poo-poo head. So, it's not letting me, what the hey. Opera has decided it's not responding. Apparently, I have entirely too many links open. <laughs> Go figure. Okay, so, let me see. What have you guys been posting over here in the... Seen as how opera is being a poop. Uh, dun, dun. Who was that guy that killed those people in Waco, Texas? Ah, yeah, Janet Reno. Yeah. Yeah. She's... Duh. Didn't she pass away not too long ago? Okay, I know. I got the swirly of death going on with my opera. <laughs> son of a son of a pa do I have something right here handy I can oh hey I have a reader's digest <laughs> hmm hmm it's from October of two years ago the hell is it doing on my computer desk hmm <laughs> God only knows. Um, well, that's too long. Okay. 
Life in these United States. Let's have a little fun with this shit, shall we? Since I got a couple more minutes and opera's being a poo-poo head. So, the chihuahua at my vet's office was quite uh, right up, or was quite right up until a huge Rottweiler came in. Suddenly, the six-pounder became Cujo, barking and slavering. Oh, please, said his owner. The only way you could get hurt, or that you could hurt that dog, would be if you got stuck in his throat. Ah, well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, baby. So here are five par parents who have been just enough time in their busy baby rearing schedules to shoot off a tweet or two. So, here we go. Um, a four-year-old said that he went potty and I asked if it was a number one or number two. And he said number seven. And now I'm terrified to go into the bathroom. Oh, my Lord. What is a number seven? I don't know. But children... I can't find my kid's birth certificate, but I apparently saved one for every Build-A-Bear we own a special file because I'm insane. Okay, yeah, that would be insane, crazy woman. Um, how about this one? This is a funny necklace, a three-year-old said with my thong around her neck. <laughs> it's an eye patch, honey. It's an eye patch. How about this? I try to explain to my kids during the movie that in reality, even a cowardly lion would definitely eat a girl and a little dog. Yeah, and your little dog, too. And finally, Mommy Milk Factory has officially closed down. Owner thanks her two loyal customers. Equipment will now be used for display purposes only. I'm thinking she's talking about the Goyles. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, well. Y'all been listening to Grammy's Rocket Chair here on this Wacka 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 Doodle Wednesday. Thank you ever so much for putting up with me, listening in, playing along. And, uh, <laughs> oh, when you are violently ill and uncontrollably vomit and <laughs> explosive diarrhea simultaneously. Ew. Oh, thanks, Poxified. That's what number seven is. Ew. Okay, I have run out of time, so thanks, y'all, for sticking around. And uh, be sure to check out Vinny at 1 Eastern Time on Friday for the Ponder Gander. I'll be back Friday evening, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. Is that right? 7 p.m.? Yeah. Um, for the Rocket Chair. So until then, y'all have an absolutely amazing rest of your evening. And uh, remember, I really do love you all. And I wish you all enough. Good night.